Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. So it was a little hub of activity around the anchor yeah. desk here right before the newscast. One of our uh, crew members, Ralph, just walked by, and I was going to drag him into this shot, embarrassed, but uh, he, he... He took off pretty fast. It's called Escape. Right yeah. now, uh, good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is Tuesday, the 21st of February, Fat Tuesday. That's right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, kind of warm for this month, and, and it will be that way all week, looks like. It really is. It's a beautiful morning out there. 64 degrees. Let's go outside with live cam. The birds are chirping. The flowers are starting, flowers are starting to bloom, and yep. here's Justin Horn our own wallflower. Aww. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I, I noticed some flowers in my garden starting to bloom yesterday, so I, I think we were kind of all convinced, at least the, the plant life is, that we're headed in spring. Feels that way. We started off this morning with some fog. We still have some, but you know what? Just within the last, I'd say, 10 seconds, Seguin popped up from almost uh, no visibility to good visibility, so we're losing the fog very, very quickly, and that uh, will continue. So I think fog is no longer a problem uh, and it will turn into a pretty warm day. I do want to show you the satellite picture there. We still have some of those low clouds and maybe again some patchy fog here and there east of San Antonio, but we're seeing blue skies here in town. A little closer look at the cloud cover. Floresville, Nixon, Carn City over to Cuero and Gonzales. You are seeing some morning clouds at this point. There's the scene over the airport though. Earlier we had some Good fog just right over top of the airport that has since left and temperatures sitting in 63 degrees. Dew point is at 60, so that's a high number. It feels pretty humid out there. And here's our case at 12 hour forecast 72 at 11 o'clock, 76 noontime up to 84 by four o'clock. So that's our high temperature. It's, it's well above average. And then tonight uh, we're still in the 80s at seven o'clock, 78 at 8 p.m. And this is just the start of things because we get some gusty west winds tomorrow. And that really pumps up the temperatures. It's very spring like throughout the seven day forecast. In fact, we're going to take a look at that coming up here in just a few minutes. Well, let's go over to Steven now and talk roadways. How are things looking? Well, Justin, I know it's warm out there, but I will tell you that I've had a pretty chill morning and let me tell you why. 281 at Loop 410 traffic has been tranquil throughout the day and that's some really great news. And this is really surprising as well because we had a lot more people return to school and, and of course to work. So be on the lookout for those school buses. We obviously know that the roads were a little bit more crowded, but thankfully some of the issues we saw out there weren't really major issues. Check out 90 West at Zosmo or even 90 at Military. Very busy spots, of course. Uh, we did have some issues out there. Those have cleared out, so let's just get you to some of those former problem spots. Loop 410 right there at Houston Street. A crash was reported uh, that cleared just moments ago, so we're not really concerned about that any longer. Uh, another problem spot was actually along US 90, and that is also cleared out along the eastbound lanes at Callahan Road. So as of right now, those spots are clear, but let's give you a wide look of the metropolitan area. Now we do have a few crash icons that are still on our map. I need to clear those out because I'm not seeing any major reports at least just yet, but some slowdowns do remain along 35 South and as well as 1604 in the northwest side. The usual spots, but we'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. Back here on Transguide 37 at Hackberry. Yeah, things are quiet and I think that's hopefully the way it's going to stay for a little while longer, at least up until afternoon rush. And by the looks of it, a lot of these Transguide cameras show the commute has dwindled down, but I'll keep a close eye on things throughout the morning. Guys, Stephen, thank you. Here's today's nine at nine. A magnitude 6.4 earthquake hit southern Turkey Monday, killing at least eight people and injuring hundreds more, according to Turkish and Syrian officials. It comes two weeks after a massive earthquake killed thousands of people in both countries. President Biden is in Poland today preparing to deliver a major speech marking the one year anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He's expected to remind the world that Russia has committed crimes against humanity. This comes a day after the president's unannounced trip into Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, yesterday. Alex Murdaugh's only surviving son is expected to take the stand for the defense in his father's double murder trial this morning. Murdaugh is on trial for the murders of his wife, Margaret, and their son, Paul, in the days after he was accused of extensive fraud at his law firm. Prosecution rested its case on Friday. As outrage over the toxic train derailment in Ohio continues to grow, a health clinic is opening today for residents reporting sore throats, headaches, and vomiting. The rail company is also now handing out checks for derailment-related expenses amid closer scrutiny of its profits in recent years. 
A recall involving a popular baby formula. It's for the Infamil Prosobi soy-based formula. The company says it's recalling the 12.9-ounce cans out of an abundance of caution because bacteria might have contaminated the formula. The formula was made between August and September of last year and has an expiration date of March 1st of next year. More than 300,000 Starbucks vanilla frappuccino bottles are being recalled because they might contain glass. The drinks are 13.7 ounce vanilla frappuccinos with the expiration dates of March 8th, May 29th, June 4th, and June 10th. A lot of British companies are apparently on board with a four-day work week. More than 60 companies have been taking part in a test of the shorter week. 18 of them say they'll make it permanent, and almost all the rest say they'll keep the test going. Sliding share prices at Amazon are taking a bite out of employee pay there. Corporate employees get a large chunk of their salaries in stock, and the slumping price could cost them pay by up to 50%. It's time to indulge. Today is Fat Tuesday, the day's most closely associated with Mardi Gras, which is actually French for Fat Tuesday. In modern times, Fat Tuesday is the last day to revel in food and drink before Ash Wednesday, which marks the beginning of Lent. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your other morning headlines, two cases are going before the U.S. Supreme Court that could have an impact on your social media. And one U.S. airline is making air travel a little more predictable and family friendly. Plus, there is going to be a historic addition to the Lincoln Memorial. And in 1918, Irene was born. So who is she? Well, David Sears is here to tell us all about her. Good morning, David. Good morning. She is the uh, birthday girl for the day. All right. So we'll have that for you in just a second. You'll enjoy the celebration. But first, two cases having to do with social media going before the Supreme Court today. And they are about as complicated as technology itself. Let's start with this one. Naomi Gonzalez, an American college student overseas, killed in that terrorist attack pulled off by ISIS back in 2015. Her parents claimed that the terrorists were radicalized because of materials they saw on YouTube. YouTube highlighted materials produced by ISIS, and that contributed to the radicalization thanks to those analytics. The argument in that case will be centered on the Communications Decency Act of 1996, which says internet companies, including social media platforms, cannot be sued over third-party content uploaded by users. Another case with another interesting twist, Anthony Novak, a young man from Ohio, created a fake police Facebook page among posts were announcements. He claimed it was obviously fake and a joke. The local police failed to see the humor in it. They arrested him, charging him with disruption of law enforcement operations. A jury found him not guilty, so now he is suing, claiming his civil rights were violated by the police. They raided my house. They took my electronics. They arrested me. My image was blasted all over the news. and I didn't do anything wrong, so I don't want them to think that's okay, because I kind of think they do. Obviously, these cases have some big implications on how social media platforms are used. If you are a family with kids and you're planning on a vacation this summer and you need to fly, one airline is about to make it a little easier for the whole family to sit together. United announcing that they are going to change how they seat passengers better and cheaper options. Kids 12 and under can sit next to their adult and don't have to pay extra. United says if adjacent seats are not available because of a last booking of a flight or passengers can change to another flight for free if the preferred seating is available. So there you go. More history being added to the Lincoln Memorial. The National Park Service building an addition to pay tribute to the monument's civil rights history. There will be exhibits and presentations that will highlight the history of the monument used as a backdrop for civil rights demonstrations throughout our history. The Martin Luther King Jr. I Have a Dream speech, one of the most famous from that area. This will be achievements from many famous Americans recognized like King Jr., Lincoln, Marion Anderson. There will also be 15,000 square feet of displays that will be opening in 2026. This is going to allow visitors to learn more about the Lincoln Memorial itself and the history that has happened here. The I Have a Dream speech by Martin Luther King, the, the concert by Marian Anderson, and, and other things that have happened. And it'll, it'll really sh demonstrate what an amazing place this has been in our nation's history. By the way, there is actually space underneath the memorial that most people don't even know about. The story of the memorial and the symbolism over the years will now be told. And finally, happy birthday to Irene Fee. 
She is 105. Irene from O'Fallon, Missouri, born in 1918. She remembers riding in a horse and buggy to church way before automobiles were the norm. Doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about the past, though. She focuses on the future. That is how she stays young. She likes keeping up with the news and the stock market. She paints, does embroidery, and traces genealogy. And here's how she stays young. I think you've got to keep your mind and your body active in order to you can't sit around. Nope, no sitting around. She's, she's on the computer right there, keeping her mind active. <clears throat> can you imagine if she keeps up with the stock market? Can you imagine, nice. okay, before the crash in the 30s, if she'd have put some more money in the stock market after the crash in the 30s, how, how much she would, you could have put like 10 bucks in there and been like yeah. one rich woman right now. Yeah. That would have been that amazing. Would, Think about a pretty that. Pretty impressive portfolio for 105 so, years old. Yes, and she's moving around just great. Moving around just fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Never know. Example for all of us. There you go. Thank you, David. Right now, 908, 65 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Many are remembering the late Red McCombs after he passed away this weekend. We're going to hear from some of the organizations he helped support here in San Antonio. Plus, students about an academy are embracing outdoor learning. Check it out. They've been working on these projects and are pushing to create these spaces in schools. We show you what they've been working on next. 9-12 right now, a group of fifth graders are pushing for outdoor door learning spaces. Spit it out, Mark. They're fine. Tiffany Huertas joins us from Bowden Academy, where students have designed outdoor spaces with sustainability goals in mind. So tell us a little bit more about this, Tiffany. Good morning. The students are very excited to showcase these projects tomorrow, but we're getting a sneak peek. They've been working on these for weeks. They have done research about the outdoors and its benefits. And to talk more, we have fifth grade teacher Victoria Martinez joining us this morning. Good morning. Tell us about these interesting projects. Good morning. Uh, yes, so our students started on a journey at Bamberger Ranch uh, where they were learning outside in nature for three days and two nights. And they just came back and were so excited about being outside and the learning that took place. And so we saw a really different transition when they came back into the classroom. They seemed a little down. They weren't as engaged. And so we started doing research on the benefits of outdoor learning and the difference between the concrete jungle and nature. And so they started designing spaces um, based on what they've researched. This is the mental health space. So they have uh, done the research here and they designed based on things that are gonna help increase mood, a place where students could come and sit and be included, uh, a place where they could come and increase their mood by swinging or just by feeling like they're on a cloud and outside. And in this area, this is our math and our science area. Uh, in this space here, they will be learning about how to grow vegetables. They'll be learning about how to recycle and compost. Um, and they'll also be learning about the chicken coop and how we can use those eggs to harvest and, and give to the community. And we have one more project here with two students. Uh, tell us about this project right here. Um, this project um, can help like Oh, the, over here in this garden, um, how it can help is clean water and sanitation. The, when the rain water goes down into the native rocks, it gets clean and go into our water for uh, our aquifer. And then we also have a sensory wall right here where students can learn about math, about music. And what was your favorite part about doing this project? My favorite part was the native plants because the native plants provide food, shelter, and water. To, for all different animals, including insects. And you also enjoyed working with your with classmates. Mates, yeah. Awesome. Well, we're going to have more from these students coming up on the noon show, but these are amazing, so detailed, and incredible work here at the school. We'll send it back to you. Yes, awesome job. Thank you, Tiffany. Let's uh, take a quick look at traffic. Stephen Cavazos has passed along a note to us. He says there is a backup, and there it is right now. This is the northbound lanes of I-35 near Malone. He is saying it is a stalled vehicle, and right now two left lanes are currently closed. So it's okay right now. We're at 65, but I hear it's, okay. it's going to be warmer. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm a big fan of the warmth. It felt great yesterday, mm -hmm. but it is, it's going to get almost hot. Okay, so that's the problem we're going to run into tomorrow. We could be closing in on 90 degrees, at least in some spots tomorrow. So that's what we have to look forward to. I want to show you a great picture 
The fog this morning, it was thick in spots, but this is a cool shot. Uh, you can see this is out near Floresville. Some of the fog there along the road wasn't too, too thick, but visibilities did come down in places like Seguin, down towards the Floresville area. That has since lifted, so the fog's pretty much gone. Audrey, thank you so much for submitting that picture this morning. Let me take you outside, and uh, let's see if we got a visitor there. What is that? I don't know. B, maybe? Um, Smudge? It's not really it moving. smaller than that. <laughs> Is it a yeah. fly? Oh, it's, a, it's a fly? Chester, what are you talking about? It's a UFO. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wish it would move. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, how rude. No, it actually looks like an ant or one of those flying ants or something. Yeah, but yeah. it's not moving. That's the problem. That's what, mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway. Maybe it decided to end its life there. <laughs> the wipers. Are we overthinking any of this? <laughs> we might be overthinking it. Anyway. Uh, it there is, you go. We'll cover, cover, it up. cover it up with a graphic. 60, 30. <laughs> Dew point is at 60. We've got easterly winds at about three miles per hour. Uh, there's like some of the morning cloud cover and morning fog that developed to our east. It, it came right up to our doorstep here in Bear County. Still trying to move a little bit closer, but it's thinning out some, so I think that we'll probably avoid the clouds here in town. 66 Pleasant and 55 right now in Kerrville, 63 in Del Rio, 62 in Uvalde. And then uh, mid 60s here around Bear County right now, 65 at Port SA, 65 right now in Holotus. Your kids had 12 hour forecast by noontime. We're up around 76. And the high today, close to 84, so that's uh, well above average. Mostly sunny is what we'll call it. Southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. And then tonight, very mild evening, 78 at 8 o'clock, 76 at 9 p.m. Here's kind of the general idea this week. It's very interesting to see how this is all setting up, but some really cold stuff up to the north. Record snowstorm up here for places like the Dakotas and Minnesota. You go south of the jet stream, it's very warm. We're going to be looking at record heat. So, I mean, really uh, very, very different uh, in the jet stream, sort of the dividing line here. Pretty impressive how this is uh, going to set up. And look at all the watches and warnings across the country. I mean, the whole western half of the country basically is under some sort of advisory. You got blizzard warnings, winter storm warnings, high wind warnings, and that goes for basically all the western states. For us, uh, we have a fire weather watch, and the reason for that is we are going to get those gusty winds tomorrow paired with some dry air, and uh, the, the fire danger tomorrow is really pretty significant. So where you see that uh, red color out near Del Rio and Rock Springs, that is extreme fire danger. we got to be so careful tomorrow as westerly winds kick up, 15 to 20 gusting to 30, but humidity levels will be at 15%, maybe a little bit below that. So any sort of grass fire, as we've been saying over the last couple of weeks, can spread very quickly. Just uh, something that we have to watch closely tomorrow. And here's a look at the dew points. So tonight, dew points increase, it's humid, but with a system moving just to our north tomorrow, it swings dry air through here, and by midday, we're in the dry air even here in San Antonio. Dew points are in the 20s, and it gets even drier as you go out west. So there lies the issue. Very dry air, warm temperatures, and southwesterly winds always tend to warm us up. We're thinking we could be up around 87 here in San Antonio tomorrow. You see some 90s on the map too. Places like Carrizo Springs, Pleasanton, low 90s for you tomorrow afternoon. So a very, very warm day for your Wednesday. Here's the rest of the forecast. 79 Thursday, we get a front through, and this uh, dries us out again. Uh, by Thursday afternoon, 75 on Friday with a lot of clouds that should keep temperatures in check. And there's a small, small chance for sprinkle or two in the back in the 80s this weekend. We get another front Monday. These fronts aren't cooling us down. They're just bringing in dry air, which if they don't bring us rain initially and then they just uh, pull in dry air, it's not it's not a great situation. So uh, a warm week, uh, spring like for sure. Yeah, very warm. We'll have to dust off all of our summer wear. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I saw something else on TransGuide uh -oh. a second ago, so I was looking at 281 and Grayson, Grayson, and I'm trying to get some more information. Uh, I'll keep looking here. I'm on the TechStat yeah. website. There, there it is, is right now. 281 at Grayson. He wrote trucks out there, so it's some sort of stall vehicle. Uh, it looks like SAPD may be out there as well. It appears to be southbound 281 at Grayson. If I'm wrong, we'll let you know. Right. It's right Still there. Moving. That exit to 35. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yep. Uh, 920, 65 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up next. Good morning. I'm Max Massey. We're here at Roots Salad Kitchen. And I got to tell you, it smells delicious, already hungry. And this is in anticipation of Black Restaurant Week and how it helps out our community.
924 Black Restaurant Week. San Antonio is an event that celebrates the contributions of black owned restaurants, food trucks and businesses in the culinary industry. Max Vassie joins us live from Roots Salad Kitchen and Max, you say this event also helps benefit the San Antonio Food Bank, right? It does help the food bank, and honestly, guys, it smells delicious. Look at this. Joined here with Lem, the owner. So, Lem, what are we looking at, and how does it help the food bank? Um, you're looking at right here is the um, Southwest Jerk Chicken Salad. Um, during Black Restaurant Week, for each of these salads, so one dollar will be donated to the San Antonio Food Bank. So, we just saw Jason here, right behind us, make the chicken. I'm so excited. Mouth is watering. It looks delicious. He's making a summer salad right now. So, Lem, tell us about Black Restaurant Week. Why is it so important? Um, it highlights um, um, black minority-owned businesses within San Antonio. Um, kind of shines a light on us to where it gives people in San Antonio opportunity to come out and enjoy some flavorful food. Right, so, <laughs> I want to highlight the back of Jason's shirt for a second, because it is fantastic. Eat good, look good, feel good. So Lem, tell us about the restaurant. You know, why that slogan and why here in San Antonio? Well, we're looking for healthy options in San Antonio. Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, barbecue restaurants, um, pizza places, burger places, um, and, and we wanted to bring something a little unique in San Antonio to give people an option to have um, not only healthy food, but, you know, very flavorful, healthy food that, that you know, that everyone will could enjoy. Heck yeah. And we saw a lot of people running outside. You guys have much more than just salads, though, right? Yes, yes. We also have um, uh, wraps. We have smoothies, acai bowls as well. We also have some very great um, flavorful um, specialty fresh brewed teas that a lot of people enjoy. Fantastic. All right, so we're running out of time right now, Lem, but make the pitch. Black Restaurant Week is next week. Why should people come here? Yes. Um, please come and enjoy our food. Try to sample um, what we have here. Um, uh, we believe that once you come once, that you'll definitely keep coming back. I got to tell you, honest man right here, because just watch them cook it. The summer salad looks delicious. This salad in particular, helping the food bank. I'm excited. Mouthwater and Mark, Steph. I might even bring you guys back some food. Not making any promises because no promises. You know, Eddie and I yeah. jerk come chicken first, salad, but no buddy. promises. Mm -hmm. I know. It's 926. It's way past our I'm lunch telling time. you. Yeah, eat good, look good, feel good, Mark and Steph. That's the rules of life. Straight from Max Matthews' mouth. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Thanks, Max. <laughs> 926, 66 degrees. There's more head on GMSA at 9. Including a young girl's performance for her 100th day of school that's getting a lot of attention online. And how a local judge is helping kids become more comfortable with our court system so it is not so intimidating. Red McCombs was a huge part of San Antonio, and since his passing was announced Monday, tributes have been pouring in. McCombs passed away at the age of 95, and our R.J. Marcus spoke with some of the many organizations that owe their very existence to McCombs, his foundation, and his generosity. Red McCombs was a larger-than-life figure, but among all the big things he and his wife Charlene accomplished, it was the small things that mattered the most to many people. He always wanted to support what we did in San Antonio through our mission, transforming this community through the power of sport. The McCombs Foundation helped grow the nonprofit organization San Antonio Sports into what it is today. They were dedicated to making sure that the kids in San Antonio in underserved areas had opportunities to succeed, and we've seen that in I Play After School. As the owner of the Spurs, McCombs used the team's platform to give back to the community. He helped found the nonprofit now known as Spurs Give. One of the key priorities that McCombs uh, had was to make a difference in education, get involved with the schools, um, help raise money for those uh, charitable organizations. Russ Bookbinder worked with McCombs for years in the Spurs organization. He says Red was a true visionary. His vision showed with Hemisphere with the Spurs, trying to get an NFL franchise, expansion franchise here in San Antonio, and then what he's done in the communities. Bookbinder and San Antonio Sports CEO Jenny Carnes say it's impossible to put McCombs' legacy and impact into words. He gave me a chance. He made a difference in my family. He made a difference in his community. San Antonio lost a true legend and um, somebody that really has meant so much to our community and has put us on the map. 
That was RJ Marquez reporting. Since 1988, Spurs Give has invested $28 million into the community for everything from playgrounds to school programs. And as for San Antonio Sports, their I Play After School program is now in 60 local schools, giving young kids early stage development in sports. Let's go back outside with live cam. Very mild start to our Tuesday. Already up near 70 degrees. Yeah, it is warming up. We uh, see mostly sunny skies out there. It is, uh, it's warm. It's going to be a warm afternoon, but not as hot as it was back in 1996. You remember this? We got up to 100 on this date back in 1996 in February. Back in 1996, when you remember when the Cowboys were good? And, uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, the Macarena was pop popular. Those are good years, uh, but it was a hot, hot stretch here in Texas. We set records all over the place that year uh, in February with these numbers. So. It's hot, but not as hot as it could be. We're expecting to be up around uh, 84 or so this afternoon. 76 noontime, 4 p.m. is when we hit that high temperature. Southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 15. And then tonight we drop back down into the 70s. Very quickly, let's take a look at the pollen count. It's a long list, but it uh, doesn't change much from yesterday. Molds, ash, elm, hackberry, mulberry, all there, but they're all in the low category. Uh, when is our average last freeze? We're going to take a look at that coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Let's look out there with TransGuy. We have a couple of stalls, but here's that picture we were looking at earlier. It's I-35 northbound near Malone Avenue. It is a stall, so those it looks like maybe even three lanes are closed at this point. And we have a stall westbound 90 at 36th Street. We all have an accident eastbound Highway 90 at Acme right there. You see uh, out there looks like we've got an uh, incident on both sides of the highway in that area. We'll keep an eye out for you tonight. We invite you to join the conversation in our new series called Fighting Fentanyl. The synthetic opioid has led to a surge in overdoses across our country, and that includes right here in South Texas. Tonight, Stephanie Jimenez introduces us to a local father with a heartbreaking story. His daughter was a freshman at UTSA and dreamed of being a doctor. She passed away last year from fentanyl toxicity. He says she did not suffer from addiction. Her father thinks it was an accident. So that's why he wants us to hear his story so you can protect your kids. Tune in for that story tonight on the Night Beat at 10. And going to the courthouse can be intimidating even for adults. So it can seem a little scary place for children. And that is why one local judge decided to create a fun children's activity book to help them better understand Bear County courts. Our Erica Hernandez gives us an inside look at the book and how your kids can get one. Fun facts, puzzles, coloring pages make up the new Children's Courthouse Adventure Book. The idea was brought to 45th Civil District Court Judge Mary Lou Alvarez, and she immediately loved it. I want them to be familiar with the courthouse. I want them to be familiar with their judges and uh, what it looks like to come to the courthouse, what we do. And so that's where the Courthouse Adventure Book came from, is just this like desire and collaboration to really get information out to the community, to our children, about what the courthouse is. The book was put together in just five days and features Judge Alvarez and her own two kids on the cover. It also includes all kinds of activities to help educate kids about the basics of a courthouse, courtroom, and the role of a judge. It's just so things the courthouse in and of itself is not such a mystery, uh, right? And so if at any point in these children's lives, if they were to come into contact with the courtroom, it's not such a scary place. As to where you can get the activity book, you could come to the 45th District Court offices at the courthouse, or you could simply download it online. We have uploaded the, the printable PDFs of this courthouse adventure book to judgealvarez.com and teachers, educators, Sunday school teachers, if you'd like to, you know, grab some pages or grab the entire book, you're free to do so. This is the first edition of the activity book, but the hope is to create new versions yearly. Erica Hernandez, KSET 12 News. ABC's Robin Roberts has been a staple on Good Morning America. And today she celebrates 10 years since returning to the GMA anchor desk following a successful bone marrow transplant. ABC's Charlene Alicott sits down with Robin to talk about this special anniversary and the simple steps you can take to save someone's life. Good morning, America. You know what a what an immense honor that is to say. She's been a familiar face right here on ABC for more than 20 years. And during that time, she has faced trials and triumphs. One of them, her fierce battle for survival against myelodysplastic syndrome, MDS. 
news of the rare blood disorder that affects the bone marrow coming five years after beating breast cancer. Robin Roberts getting a life-saving bone marrow transplant from her dear sister, Sally Ann. It was 10 years ago that she returned to the anchor desk. What does 10 years mean to you, Robin? Okay, Charlene. Um, woo, you've got... Mm. You know, I haven't really taken time because I've been so um, focused on the 10 years and showing the, the growth of the treatment and the people who have been impacted by our viewers responding to the call to be the match that I really haven't taken the time until this moment to, to think about me and what this moment means to, to me. I am grateful that my mama taught me make your mess your message and that I have been able to, to find the meaning behind why this was placed in my path. Now, the survivor turned thriver is working hard to make sure others get the same chance. Robin continuing her advocacy to build the registry of donors for Be The Match. I was very, very blessed that one of my three siblings, Sally Ann, was a match and was a perfect match. Now, you leapfrog 10 years later, you don't need a perfect match. Now, back 10 years ago, you did. That's the technology. That's the growth that we have seen in these last 10 years. But the registry is a literal lifeline for countless people. About 70% of patients are still looking for their donor, and you could be the potential match to save someone's life. All it takes is a simple sign-up and a swab. Shirley Ellicott, ABC News, New York. I was telling Steph this morning, uh, several years ago, many of us at uh, KSAT got a chance to fly to New York and sit in with the GMA team and got to meet Robin and George and the gang. And, uh, and Robin truly is an, an amazing person. Yeah. Uh, she seems like that on the air. On the air, and, but and, in person as well. And she's genuine. She yeah. truly is. She's a very sweet person. We're very glad she reached this milestone. Absolutely. 939, 67 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And a lot of children celebrate the 100th day of school in different ways, but one young girl is getting a lot of attention for her costume. We're going to have that story when we come back. Go hug from mom. Action from Mutton Bustin' last night at the San Antonio Stock Show Rodeo. That last girl, she was on for a while. The sheep had to kind of lean into it to throw her off, though. <laughs> it's like, the sheep's like, excuse me. Yeah, we're <laughs> this done. is where you go. We are done. Some oh. tough kids, man. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, No doubt good. about it. Uh, hey, uh, I had a few people ask me, what about planting? Is it time for that? I think what we, about planting, Justin? I think Justin? we discussed oh, yeah. it a little bit yesterday. Yeah. It's, it's always hard to say whether or not we're going to get another freeze, but we can tell you what our average last freeze is. And keep in mind, there's a spread here. Uh, we've gone as far as April uh, and seen a freeze before. But the average here in San Antonio, February 24th. February 28th in Gonzales, you get into March as you get into the hill country. Uh, so we're getting there. I mean, we're right on the doorstep, and you look down the line, I, I can tell you there is no threat of a freeze anywhere over the next uh, seven to 10 days. But beyond that, uh, still kind of hard to say. Uh, as we go outside for you, man, that thing is still there. I don't know what that is. Um, we got uh, mostly clear skies and 63 degrees at the airport. 65 Stinson, 65 Kelly, 64 at Randolph. There's a light easterly wind anywhere from five to 10 miles per hour. 70 in Rock Springs, 63 Del Rio, 67 in Uvalde, 69 Gonzales. 69 Pleasanton. So we're already starting to see some 70s on the map. This is going to be a quick uh, warm up today. And around Bear County, mid 60s, but we're already closing in on 70 there in Holotus. I would not be surprised if we're in the 70s by next hour. Forecast temperature this afternoon 84 here in town. That's well above average. Some places will be in the upper 80s. Pleasanton, Pearsall this afternoon. And then tomorrow morning, doesn't get all that cool. Mid 60s, pretty much like this morning. I do think we'll start off though with some drizzle and fog. So heads up there. Could be a little bit damp as you head into work and school tomorrow, but that doesn't last because dry air comes in from the west. 
Skies clear and we're up around 87 tomorrow. Our warmest day throughout the seven day forecast. And I do think we'll see some 90s tomorrow. It's going to feel not at all like February. Uh, the satellite picture shows those clouds we were watching earlier. Uh, still around Seguin, but uh, breaking up there uh, near Nixon. And some of these are trying to work into the east side of Bear County. We'll see. Most of the city, though, still seeing plenty of sun. And it's uh, really our eastern counties that have been dealing with some of the morning fog and cloud cover so far. San Antonio points west. It's been mostly sunny. As we look at the bigger picture, snow is really starting to get underway across the northern tier states. And you uh, look at the Dakota's heavy snow there. This is going to be shifting in towards Minneapolis. This is the start of things. Blizzard conditions possible here. This is going to be some record snowfall and it's going to cause a lot of issues uh, for those folks up there. Uh, this is kind of the theme this week. We got really cold stuff, a lot of active weather snow up north and then potentially some record heat down to the south. Pretty interesting how this is setting up. I mean, it is a battle of air masses here. We're on the warm side of things and there's no indication that that changes, as I said. You see the watches and warnings across the country, plenty of them. The whole western half of the country basically blanketed in watches and warnings. You got blizzard warnings, winter storm warnings, winter storm watches, winter weather advisories, high wind warnings for the panhandle. It's going to be another windy day for those folks coming up tomorrow. And for us, uh, we've got a fire weather watch, not as windy as the panhandle, but windy tomorrow. And because of that dry air we talked about earlier, warm temperatures, there's going to be a high fire danger tomorrow west of San Antonio. So places like Del Rio, we've got to watch very closely. That's where we have an extreme fire risk coming up tomorrow. Uh, humidity levels low, winds 15 to 20 and gusty. Uh, relative humidity will fall as we get into tomorrow to near, uh, well, less than 15%, maybe even into the single digits by the afternoon. And that is going to create that uh, significant fire threat. So the extended forecast, again, 87 tomorrow, 79 on Thursday after some morning fog. There is a front that comes through on Thursday. Cools us down some, some will be in the mid 70s Friday. I think we'll see a lot of clouds on Friday with just a small chance of a sprinkle. But we're back in the 80s this weekend. We get another front on Monday and this just brings a small chance for rain. So there's not much there as far as rainfall goes, unfortunately. Heat's great, but uh, we need some rain. You know, I've noticed in the last couple of days, a completely awkward transition out of weather. Mm -hmm. uh, 100 <laughs> days of school. Yeah. I've been seeing pictures the last week yeah. or so, different parts of the country. Have, do your kids do anything special for 100 days of school this year? Not well, this year. We, Not this the, year. the school did. We did it. We yeah. kind of right. dropped the ball this year. It's a lot of work. Year. It, yeah. <laughs> it can be. It can. leaves we'll, you we'll wondering where people find the time. You, yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And creativity. Yeah. Yes, well, I'm impressed. Okay, well, one third grader has gone viral for her elaborate 100 days of school costume. ABC's Will Gans got to speak with her about her inspiration. Take a look. She might walk like a grandma. And she might talk like a grandma. My name is Miss Marlene. Yeah. We're celebrating the one day of school. Oh, yeah. Woo. Glover. But Braley Perry is just nine years old. I have to say, Braley, I don't recognize you without the gray hair. You look so different. Perhaps a hat. This one is my least favorite. <laughs> It looks like snails on top of each other. Braley celebrating her 100th day of third grade. Oh! Oh! Glory! Her performance viewed by nearly 9 million people on TikTok. People are saying she is, has really good talent. She is like the best thing I ever saw. <laughs> That might be me. It might have been me in the comments saying those things. Undoubtedly, Braley's performance of Grandma at Church is miraculous. But where did the inspiration come from? A lot of third graders might dress up as Beyonce or they might dress up as Taylor Swift or Rihanna, but you're dressing up as a grandma. I get it from my church members at church. So I decided to like, I wonder if I could do that. Turns out she can. Let me see. Oh, 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 Lord, have mercy. You scared me with that one. Her 100th day of school tradition going back to pre-K. Braley's mom says her personality has always been big and bright. And with mom behind the camera and dad playing the piano, a star is born. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. I'm in a third grade. 
even if that star looks like she was born in the 1930s. Jesus got from the grave. Woo! Woo! Braylee tells me she has big plans for her 100th day of fourth grade, more rings, bigger hats, and in the meantime, she's working on The Braylee Show to give her fans, myself included, more of her singing, dancing, and church lady impressions. Will Gans, ABC News, Los Angeles. Braylee Perry, ladies and gentlemen, yes. not the last we've heard of her. Yeah, she's good. It's not just the work that goes into the costume. That's all her personality making it happen. It is. Yeah. Okay, 950, 67 degrees. When we come back, a look at the new movie coming to theaters on Friday that is loosely inspired by true events. Is this, oh, this is Cocaine Bear, mm -hmm. this we were just talking about. <laughs> we were. New movie headed to theaters this weekend was uh, loosely inspired by true events. CNN's Rick Damagelli gives us a look at Cocaine Bear and a little insight into the making of the film. No, 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 no don't eat that, don't eat that. Let's see what kind of effect that has on us. Elizabeth Banks steps behind the camera to direct the gory comedy Cocaine Bear. A bear did cocaine. I loved the challenges that it presented. Um, it felt very risky to me because it's a confluence of a lot of things. It had to, you know, the tone of the movie was so important to pull off. I knew that I, I could kind of hide a comedy inside of a horror movie. She's an actor who knows how to talk to actors. And so to have uh, one of us in the in the director's chair. It's a it's a plus. But Mama Bear and Papa Bear will be very angry because drugs, especially cocaine, are very very bad. I have these like wild friends, mom friends of mine, um, and they're like, if you don't do this movie, we're gonna stop being friends with you. You've got to do this movie, and we're all taking our 16 year olds to go see it when it comes out in a big pack. The movie's R rating for bloody violence and gore is well earned. I've gone down the, the internet rabbit hole of looking at real um, animal attack victims and what that looks like, and it is, it's horrifying. It's gory, it's crazy, and I, I just felt like we had to lean in. I mean, this concept is bold and audacious, and if I made any choices that were not bold, then I, it, it, it wasn't gonna work. You, ha you have to lean into this material. You can't shy away from it. It kinda seems like the thing that stays with the man forever. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Okay, so not a kid's movie. The real yeah. cocaine bear incident occurred in Georgia in 1985 when investigators found a black bear dead from ingesting large amount of cocaine which was thrown from a smuggler's plane. So it is based on a true story. Loosely. Very well, loosely. loosely, yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Hey. Also, footnote, Ray Liotta's last movie. Okay. Oh, yes. that's right. I heard mm -hmm. them talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. I think it will <laughs> get a lot of views. Yes, yeah. yes, it will. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah.